of all. No, quero errar cura nada que tu mudou você. Amém. Without his presence everything would be in vain. Passina o povo aqui se nos vestes no chama maturo. Amém. We greet you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. No quase time that attends Jesus Christ. It's a great honor to be among you. Cura me que eu vou curo que eu pagar te penho. I'm asking you to pray for me. Because I've been doing a lot of preaching. And it's totally different than just preaching back home. Uh, the people, the, the believers of Africa, they know how to take a preacher and get everything they can out of that preacher. But it's an honor to stand for the Lord Jesus Christ again today. And we also want to say happy birthday to Brother Godwin Chisindi. Praise, Praise the Lord. Good to see uh, Brother Stephen Smith, Brother George's son. Amen. God bless you. Believe it or not, you look a little like your daddy. Amen. Amen. I tell you what, the main thing we want to look like is what the word says we're supposed to look like. Amen. We bring you greetings from our church. Uh, we appreciate, as I said, the invitation. But not to delay time, I want to go right into the scripture. And uh, I want to read from the book of Leviticus chapter 23. My family started uh, following the ministry of, of our prophet William Branham in 1949. My father was a missionary, so he went down into uh, Latin America and spent some years back and forth in the mission work. 
Baba wangu wae missionary Saka wae pinda ku Latin America Wachikwira ni kutika kwe makore So by the grace of God I have been raised to give respect to William Branham And then uh, uh, one day God actually came in my life And gave me a revelation of his message and I preach the message because I believe the message. And so I would like to dedicate this sermon this morning to the message of the hour. This will be the third time that I'm going to preach this message in this country. But I believe the Holy Spirit has spoke to me to do it again. So let's bow our heads and pray. Heavenly Father, as we bow our hearts before you today, we're so thankful for this wonderful privilege to look upon these precious faces of your dear children, children of God, Lord, that is standing for a wonderful, wonderful truth in the end of humanity, in this present world that we're living in today. Father, we just ask you to open our hearts up. Lord, open my voice up. Give me strength, Lord, to be able to preach the word of God in such a way that it will help. I have not chosen the most evangelistic sermon that we could preach. But I've chosen to preach, Lord, what I believe you have helped me with and we trust it will help them with. Father, our heart has one motive and one objective and that's to get closer to God and to be able to do what you've called us to do in an honorable way. Father, we appreciate Brother Godwin He's a man of integrity. He is a man that doesn't compromise. I can see that. And we appreciate that in him. That's the character that you've given him. Lord, bless him on this birthday. Lord, thank you for giving him such faithfulness to be able to lead such a people and to be an example of what a real man of God, what a real husband and father and servant of God should be. We thank you for his life and for his service. Now, Lord, we give ours to you this morning. We appreciate you, and we know, Lord, that you're here because we already sense your presence. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, amen. 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 God bless you this morning. Let's turn in our Bibles to Leviticus 23.34 Speak unto the children of Israel saying the 15th day of this seventh month shall be the feast of tabernacles for seven days unto the Lord in verse 39, also in the 15th day of the seventh month, when ye have gathered in the fruit of the land, ye shall keep a feast unto the Lord seven days. On the first day shall be a Sabbath, and on the eighth day shall be a Sabbath. Saizo zo nezuva regumenere chan ro mwezi we chinomwe kana mchinge maungana eh maungani dza zvipere ko zvenyika muchachengeta mutambo mazuva mano mwe kuna Jehova zvaro kutanga richave sabata uye musi we chisere richave sabata May God bless you you may be seated mari vakukomborerei gara izvo nyipasi I would like to speak this morning again on the Feast of Tabernacles. And I would like to go just in a little bit different direction than what I've been preaching. 
Ndoda kungo tindi tiende ine kamwe kamu rutivi. Kasiriko kanda menge nichipari za. But I want you to notice in the scripture. Asi. Ndoda kutimi chereche zemuru gwaro. That the feast of tabernacles is the only feast of the Lord. Mutambo we matumba. Ndoda we gamutambo wa Jehovah. That has an eighth day attached to it. Une zuarechi sere. Raka patani zgopa uri. Amen. Uh, all the other feasts of the Lord only had uh, 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 just, you know, uh, one day or seven days. But the Feast of Tabernacles has an eighth day. But I want to ask the question this morning. What feast are you under? Is it okay? Would it be okay to take my coat off? All <laughs> right. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Amen. The, the, uh, we, 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 well, I want you to notice this morning that when you look around you, you are worshiping under tents. And the Feast of Tabernacle was a memorial of when God's children was worshiping under tents. And it was in St. John, the seventh chapter. When Jesus stood on the great day of the Feast of Tabernacles. And it was the last day of the great feast. He said, if any man is thirsty, let him come unto me. So I believe that we are invited into the presence of Jesus Christ this morning. The Hebrew word feast means appointed times. A feast is also a holy convocation. Meaning that they are intended to be times of meeting between God and man. It's, it's like a conference. And if the feast that you are under is not bringing you closer to God, you're under the wrong feast. According to the book of Jude, there are many feasts. Amen. Jude said some have gone after the feast of Cain. They're following a bloodless religion. A religion without life. A religion without power. A religion that cannot change lives. A religion that don't heal the sick. But we're not under that feast this morning. We're not under that feast this morning. We're under a feast that's got power. That has the power of the supernatural. That heals the sick. Cleanses the leper and raises the dead. Amen. 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 We see Amen. The, the, the feast of Cain. It brought the mark of the beast upon his life. And then we see that some have ran greedily after the heir of Balaam. They're under the feast of Baal Peor. They're under the feast of the Moabites. They have commercialized this message. They're in it for money, women, and popularity. But the feast of the Moabites is a denominational feast. 
It's a feast of organized religion. But the bride is not under that feast. Amen. You cannot denominate the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost is a free spirit. And where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. God's people are a free people. We are not bound because he who the Son has set free is free indeed. Hallelujah. Amen. The feast of the Moabites. It was a spirit of fornication. It was a spirit that 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 uh, had the animalistics of men attached to it. And many of the men from the children of Israel. They looked upon them Moabite women dressed immorally and and a spirit of fornication came upon them and God had to kill those men because that's the spirit of denomination. It had the mark of the beast upon it. The instincts of animals. And we see that same spirit is in the world today. It's trying to bring forth a one world church. A one world religion. And bringing everybody back to the organized spirit of the Roman Catholic Church. It's all bound to the mark of the beast. But this bride is not a fornicator. This, this bride is pure and unadulterated. We are a virgin to the word of God. We have not been manhandled. Amen. We are the wife of Jesus Christ. And we can say we are Miss Jesus. Can somebody say I'm Miss Jesus? Turn around and shake somebody's hand and say I'm Miss Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. You are not the church. You are the bride, Miss Jesus Christ. Miss Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory. To God be the glory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And then there are those that's under the feast of Korah. Men with golden calf schemes. Also the mark of the beast. They are leading disciples unto themselves. They are speaking evil of God's vindicated prophet. But if William Branham was a prophet like unto Moses, then there's got to be a feast of Korah somewhere. Somebody's got to complain. Somebody's got to murmur. But brother, I'm not going to join myself to the feast of Korah. I'm going to join myself to the feast of the revealed word of God for this hour. That's what I'm sent from heaven itself. Somebody asked me here what back. They said, why is there so many people rising up against the prophet? Because our prophet was likened unto Moses. Hallelujah. Brother Roy Roberson is my wife's uncle. Brother Roy Roberson. 
And he told me he was battling trying to understand who William Branham was. And he said one day he was on a mountain. And the pillar of fire came down. And a voice spoke out of that fire. And said this man is likened unto Moses. As Moses was sent to lead his generation, so has this man been sent to lead his generation. As Moses was given the power to create, even so this man has been given the power to create. Hallelujah. Brother Roy came back to the prophet Brother and told him of what had happened. And Brother Branham just smiled. And he said, Do you remember the squirrels, Brother Roy? Our prophet was likened unto Moses. God gave him the ability to create. Let me tell you, God is an awesome God. God is an omnipotent God. He is a God that is unlimited in power. And a man fully surrendered to God is omnipotent. All things are possible to them that believe. Take the limits off God. Let God be God. And we are the sons and daughters of God. And we were created in the image of God. And we have power to create. We have the power of the spoken word. We can speak to the mountain. And we can say, be moved. We can speak into existence. Because the bride has thus said the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Let's give the Lord our hands this morning. He's worthy of all praise. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank God for the feast of Korah. Because that proves to me. If there's a feast of Korah, there's also a feast of Tabernacle. There's a place where the presence of the Lord is dwelling in the midst of his people. That's why the sick are healed. That's why lives are being changed. It's because this message is Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. The feast of Korah tried to lead the people back to the ways of the world. Jude said they are spots in your feast of charity. They're feeding themselves without fear. Clouds they are without water. Carried about by winds of false doctrine. Trees whose fruit have withered. At one time they said William Branham was God's messenger. At one time they lived like they believed the message. But now their fruit have withered. When fruit withers, it's because they've been cut off from the life. They're without fruit. They're twice dead. They're plucked up by the root. Can somebody say, Hallelujah? They're raging waves of the sea. They're foaming out their own shame. They can't get along with the people of God. They can't get 
along with the prophet of God. And they can't get along with the word of God. They're wandering stars. To whom is reserved the blackness and darkness forever. But as the bride of Christ, we must stand between the living and the dead. And we must plead for their souls. We must say, God, if there's any way, open their eyes up before it's too late. Some might be like Peter. But Peter finally came back. Amen. We should pray for them. Amen. But God has a feast for you. And we are invited to the greatest feast of them all. Hallelujah. Brother Godwin, my mother is 86 years old. And she came to me here a while back. And she said, honey, I think you need to read the book of Revelation. She said, there's something in there that you need to receive. So I began to read the book of Revelation. And I found out that the signifying angel of Revelation 1 and 1. William Branham said was a prophet. And John is a type of the bride. And that signifying angel revealed that book of Revelation to John. That same angel was the flying angel. The third flying angel of Revelation 14. William Branham said Luther was the first flying angel. He, he said Wesley was the second flying angel. He said, but the prophet of the end time or the, or, or the messenger of the end time is the third flying angel. And in the mark of the beast, the prophet said, this is the flying of the third angel's message. That same angel was in Revelation 17.1. He was the one that revealed to John history Babylon. That same angel was Tumar Revelation 18, 18, verses 1 through 4. Verse 1 to 4. He was the one given the voice yeah, of God Kapua is green. to cry out to the, the people, people, come out of her, my people. He was the same angel in Revelation 19 and, and 9. Tumar where John was so overwhelmed by the great revelation of the mystery Babylon. And he was so overwhelmed by the revelation of the false bride until he fell down to worship at the feet of that angel. But that angel said, don't worship me. I'm just your brother. I'm just a prophet. I've been sent to show you these things. Now John had known Jesus in the flesh. John had known Jesus in the flesh. But this man's ministry was so much like Christ. Until it was Christ. Until John got confused. And he started to worship that prophet. And he said, don't do it. Hallelujah. That same angel is the one that revealed John the new Jerusalem. And the future home. And the true bride of Christ. And when John saw all of those revelations, he made the same mistake again. He fell down to worship at the feet of that angel. But the angel said, don't do it, I'm just your brother. 
Amen. Let me tell you, church, it's not a strange thing for people to try to worship Brother Branham. Brother Branham was in the book of Revelation. And it was prophesied that people that are good people, genuine people, will struggle with that understanding. But by the grace of God, the word will correct the error. And that prophet told us, don't worship me. Just worship him. I'm only your brother. Brother Branham had mistakes. He was a human man. But let me tell you, he was a surrendered vessel. And he became the mouthpiece of God. And when he spoke to this generation, it was the same as if God was speaking. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Leviticus 23. Leviticus 23. We look at these seven feasts. And Israel was commanded to keep them every year. We understand that Passover took place on, uh, on, on the month uh, uh, of April. And the feast of Passover is a type of Calvary. Then came the feast of unleavened bread. Which is a type of the unadulterated word of God. And that even the body of Jesus could not be corrupted. Then came the feast of first fruits. Which is a type of the resurrection. And there the wave sheep was waved over the people. Now among the Jews. And you can see the same thing in Luke 22 and 1. That they took the three feasts. Passover, unleavened bread and, 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 and first fruits. And they put them all together. And they called it Passover. And then we have following that 50 days after first fruits. Came the feast of Pentecost. It was called the Feast of Weeks. Why is it Because there were seven weeks from the first fruits to Pentecost. And Brother Bram said those seven Sabbaths was a type of the church ages. But on the 50th day was Pentecost. Because Pentecost means 50. And then there was a lapse of time between Pentecost and the next feast. There was actually five months. And the Feast of Trumpets came on the first day of the seventh month. And Brother Bram said the seven months also typed the feast. Amen. We look at the Feast of Trumpets. And we find the prophet said they represent to us the seven seals. Can you say amen? amen? And then came the feast of atonement. And he said to us it represents the rejection of the revealed word and the rejected servant. And he preached the indictment. And then following that came the Feast of Tabernacles. 
And it had eight days attached While to it. But the Jews take the last three feasts. I got this from a rabbi himself. This is the teaching of the Old Testament. And they took the three feasts of the end and they called them the Feast of Tabernacles. And in the Bible, the males had to appear before God three times a year. They had to appear before God on Passover. They had to appear before God at Pentecost. And they had to appear before God in the tabernacle. Amen. 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 The prophet of God said, the church Pentecostal feast. He said it was between Pentecost and trumpets. But I want to show you the reason why William Branham said. He said the Pentecostal feast to the church ended with the calling out of the bride. In 1946. The angel of the Lord met the prophet. And God gave him a gift of healing to the world. In 1947, William Branham went up into Canada. And he preached the gospel. And there was such a move of the Holy Ghost. Until people begin to lay between the horns of the altar. And a great move of God started in Canada. And they called it the Latter Rain Brethren. Amen. In 1948. They formed that movement called the Latter Rain. In 1948, in 1948, the UN was also formed. UN, United Nations. In 1948, 1948, the World Council of Churches was formed. In 1948, in 1948, Israel became a nation. Israel, In 1948. Billy Graham had his first crusade in California. Billy Graham California. And he be, became accepted. In 1948, in Tulsa, Oklahoma, Oral Roberts started his first crusade. But at the same time, the angel of the Lord was moving through the land with a dedicated prophet. Oh. Hallelujah. The people of the latter reign, they loved William Branham. Because he was the one that inspired them in their walk with God. And so they always wanted him to come in among them. But in 1952, there was a group of brothers from the latter reign that said the latter reign movement has, has, has become humanized. And so they made the decision to pull out. And they formed a fellowship. And it was called the Full Gospel Businessmen Fellowship International. Such men like Carl Williams. Clay Sonmore. Henry Krauss. Henry Krauss. And even Demos Shakarian. And many other brethren. And because of their love for William Branham. They made him the main speaker of their convention. 
But another man came in the fellowship. His name was Brother David Duplessis. They called him Mr. Pentecost. And he was from South Africa. But he was a charismatic. And he believed in ecumenism. He, he believed in the formation of an ecumenical council. He had direct contact with the Vatican. And he had contact with most Protestant denominations. And he began, and he began to talk about this, this unity back to Rome. That the Protestants need to fellowship back with, with the Mother Church. Brother Branham pleaded with him not to do it. But he continued right on. In 1956, William Branham went to a full gospel convention. William Branham went to a full gospel convention. And when he got to the full gospel fellowship convention, he met with some of the leading uh, members. And they discussed what was going to be on the agenda for that convention. That night they went to church. And the spirit of prophecy fell in the church. There was around 2,000 people there. And the prophet said, up and sanctify yourself. You have the accursed thing among you. Sanctify yourself against tomorrow. Because unless you get rid of it, you will not be able to stand before your enemies. That was the same word of the Lord that came when Achan was in the camp. A Babylonian garment and a golden wedge. The next morning, Brother David Duplessis came to the platform. And Brother Oral Roberts came to the same platform. And they, in, and they introduced a movement. And it was called the CER. Yeah, the CER. Which is called the Charismatic Ecumenical uh, Renewal. You know, eh? Charismatic Ecumenical Renewal. Oh, hallelujah. And they swallowed it. <laughs> William Branham kept fellowshipping. William Branham, I got a bajiana now. He kept trying to help him. Until 1963, in Phoenix, Arizona, he was preaching at one of their conventions. And as he came down to the end of his message, he screams out. He said, you full gospel businessman. He said, you became a denomination organization like all the rest. And when he said that, he spun around twice in a 360 degree turn. It was a turning point. And he screamed, come out of her, my people. They had an immediate executive session. I said they had an immediate session. Among the executive members of the full gospel business. I'm telling you facts. 
They voted to put Brother Branham out of the fellowship and not let him preach anymore. 17 members voted against Brother Branham. Only two members stood with the prophet. And that was Clay Sonmore and Carl Williams. They said if you vote him out, you vote us out. So they, 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 they withdrew the vote and invited Brother Branham back six months later. He walked on their platform and he said, my text today is I indict this generation for the second crucifixion of Jesus Christ. He said, I indict you Pentecost. I indict you independence. He said, you've taken the word of God. That's been vindicated. And you have crucified Jesus Christ afresh. Hallelujah. Brother, let me tell you, they kicked Christ out of the church. I said they kicked Christ out of Laodicea church. Jesus was put outside of the camp. Hallelujah. Yes. But when he was put outside of the camp, he pitched a tent. I said he pitched a tent and a message began to be preached and the word began to be unfolded like it had never been unfolded before. Can we recognize our day and its mission? The bride is a separated people. The C-E-R C-E-R-A If you go to the uh, Christian bookstore in America. And if you will go under charismatic interest. And, and you will find uh, 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 different men in the writings of their book. And I won't call their names currently. But it will say in the foreword of many of them books. We give them respect for being help in the original movement of the CER. The charismatic ecumenical movement. Charismatic ecumenical movement. That renewal movement. A renewal movement. And it's that same group. In Texas, here a few months ago, with Kenneth Copeland and all the rest, that began to openly renew fellowship with Rome. It's that same movement that our prophet screamed out and said, Don't do it. That very same movement has brought the Protestants back in connection with the Roman Church. Everything in this world is changing. But there's fixing to come another change. I said there's fixing to come a greater change. There is a bride on this earth today that's fixing to have a body change. We're fixing to go to another feast. Called the marriage supper in the sky. We're going to eat angels food. And we're going to sit down at the table. And we're going to fellowship together. And Jesus is going to walk into the feast. And he's going to walk up and down. And he's going to kiss us on our neck. And he's going to wipe the tears from our eyes. And he's going to say, weep no more, my child. It's all over. Enter now into the joys of the Lord that was prepared before the foundation of the Lord. Can somebody shout glory? 
We know what we believe. Tu ne sais pas ce que tu as. We know where we are at. Tu ne sais pas ce que tu as. I am not ashamed of the gospel. I did not in the gospel. I am not ashamed of the message. I did not in the gospel. It is the power of God unto salvation. Tu ne sais pas où tu es. So, first to the Greeks or Jews. And now to you and I, brother, we are blessed people today. Have our eyes open. Glory, 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 They said, oh, he wasn't Malachi 4. And they began to ridicule him. And I said, wait a minute, wait a minute. I said, if he's not Malachi 4, then you take me to where Malachi 4 is. I said, show me another man that had the Messiah sign for our generation. And he was saying that the Look testimonies up. of my mother and, 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 and Brother Roberson and them that I've heard for years. Trying to tell me that I couldn't even believe my own mama. That I couldn't even believe Brother Roberson. Brother Roberson. I said, wait a minute. I said, I want to ask you a question. I said, what am I going to do? With the Godhead. Because can I tie in the quaco? Nyaya umari to know part of the chitigudi. What am I gonna do with serpent seed? Nyaya bell yoka to know part of chitigudi. What am I gonna do with marriage and divorce? Nyaya marriage and divorce to know part of chitigudi. What am I gonna do with the revelation of the seven church ages? Kuzaru Wakamazeram e Kerekamanome Tosa to Gudi. What am I gonna do with the future home? Did I just say the future home? Things that are to be. Things that are to be, and all of these great revelations of the end times. What am I going to do with the revelation of the seven seals? I said, Wait a minute! I'm like the man that the boy that was born blind in Saint John nine. Jesus opened his eyes. And Pharisees came. They said, Who opened your eyes? They said, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. And the Pharisee said, oh, wait a minute. Did you not know he was born of fornication? They attacked the original vindication. Did you not know that, that Mary got pregnant by a Roman soldier? And that Jesus was born in fornication. And they fabricated this story of a virgin birth to hide the shame of the family. And they presented such a good argument. Until the young man said, Well, you know what? I don't know if that's true or not. He said, but there's one thing I do know. I was once blind, but now I see. And I said the same thing. There was a time in my life when I was running from God, but one day the angel Lord came over my bed and stirred my heart. And showed me the message was meant for me. I was once blind, but now I see. And I'm going to stand with what God has given to my heart, which I believe to be the infallible revelation of Jesus Christ says to the end time. We don't have to back up to the devil. 
We have nothing to be afraid of. God backs up his word. God backs up his men. God backs up his children. Just let the love of God come among you. And the love of God will conquer every devil. It will conquer every critic. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. May the feast of charity take control. And may the bride be crowned with perfect love. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Lord showed me this the other day. I saw that the seven compound names of Jehovah. Each name represents a feast. Jehovah Jireh. Jehovah Jireh. The Lord will provide for himself a sacrifice. The Passover. Do Passover. Jehovah Rapha. Jehovah Rapha. The Lord our healer. Jehovah And healing is the children's bread. Jehovah Nisa. Jehovah Nisi. The Lord our banner. Jehovah Ndemureza wedu. Christ is the first fruits. Christo. The resurrection. The testimony. Of the resurrection. All the way down to the last one. Jehovah Shema. Jehovah Shema. The Lord is present. The Feast of Tabernacles. Christ in the midst of his church. The bride. Hallelujah, brother. We're not feeding off the words of a man. We're feeding off the unfailing body word of the Son of Man. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. In 1962, 1962, William Branham had a vision. William Branham, I think it was on January 2nd, 1962. January 1962. And he came to his son. And he said, write the vision down that daddy tells you exactly as I say it. And, and they, they actually printed the, most of the vision uh, just before blasphemous names was preached. And Brother Branham used five pages in blasphemous names with that vision. He said, He said, As at five o'clock this morning. He said, I had a vision. And I saw myself standing in the sun. And rays of light was coming around me. And shining down upon the people. Hallelujah. And William Branham in that letter. William Branham Zambayoyo. He said that was the fulfillment of Revelation 1917. Of the angel standing in the sun. Calling them to the feast of Armageddon. Brother Branham said the same thing in the fourth seal. He talked about the angel standing in the sun. He said in the Old Testament it was Elijah. And he said talking about the angel. And he said that he, he was the one that destroyed Ahab and Jezebel. And fed their flesh to the beast. And the fowls of the air. And he said the end time And he said the end time Elijah Will do the same thing In the spiritual form of the church 
that voice of that seventh angel screamed out in Revelation 22 don't you add to it don't you take away or the plagues of this book will be added unto you brother we've got to leave the message just like God gave it to us you don't have to believe me but you got to believe your prophet and I'm doing my best to say what he said. Every day in heaven and earth will pass away. But the word of the living God shall never pass away. Can you Hallelujah. say that? Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I'm not going to read much. I do want to just read a couple things of prophecy. I think it would be a benefit. He said in Feast of Trumpets. He said notice now the scriptures. In, Le in, Levit in Leviticus he's talking Leviticus. He said after the long period of Pentecost. Which ends in the calling out of the bride. The bride is called out by a servant, the rejected. Let me say this. I am not doing away with any feast for the bride. But the feast of Pentecost ended for the church. But the prophet of God said, He said every feast was held in the same place. It was the place where God put his name. Zimbo. And that name is Jesus Christ. And I've got the quote where the prophet said, Now his name is in her. The bride. When the church kicked Christ out through a vindicated prophet, they cut themselves off from every feast. Therefore, they have no access to the Passover, the blood. They have no access to the unleavened bread. They have no access to a true baptism of the Holy Ghost. They have no access to a resurrection, first fruits. They have no access to a rapture. They have no access to the feast of, of trumpets or the seals. They have no access to God's eternal atonement. And they're not a part of the feast of tabernacle. But brother, every feast is still for the bride. Ah, see. We still have access to the blood. We have access to the Holy Ghost. We have access to divine healing. We have access to the revelation of God for this hour. We have access to a millennium. We have access to a new heaven and a new earth. We have access to a future home. And we're going to keep just moving on, moving on, moving on. Hallelujah. You talk about Jehovah Jireh. The Lord himself shall provide. That's the power of a creator. And the power of a creator was in this ministry of the end time. Brother Wilbur Hill. Brother Wilbur Hill. I, I, he was, I pastored him for many years. Uh, until he finally passed on. But he was a Church of Christ man. 
church of Christ. And the first time he came to the Branham Tabernacle by invitation. Brother Branham was there serving the Lord's Supper. And he never believed in miracles. And so he said he got in the, in the communion line. And he said when he got up there in front of Brother Branham and Brother Neville. He said he heard Brother Neville whisper to Brother Branham. We've run out of wine. What are we going to do? And Brother Branham said, let's pray. And so he started praying. And Brother Hill said, I kept my eyes open. And he said, as Brother Branham started to pray, he said, I watched wine begin to be created until every cup was full of wine. Jesus had to take bread to make more bread. Jesus had to take fish to make more fish. But in our day, Jesus has done greater things than he did in his own ministry. He created squirrels where there was no squirrels. He created wine where there was no wine. Jehovah Jireh is in the midst of the bride today. The creator of heaven and earth is the creator in man. That's why you have the ability to speak. You have a creative voice. We can create missing limbs. We can create missing legs. We can call forth the saints from the dust of the earth. Because the final voice to the final age is in this bride. As long as we stay under the message of our death. Shake somebody by the hand and say he's Jehovah Jireh. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Ori, he's Jehovah Rapha. Yeah, Jehovah Rapha. He is the Lord, our healer. Jehovah, not to pour that. In 1955, 1955, that was before I was born. Don't tell me I look too old. I got white hair, but I'm not as old as as. Uh, as Wait a minute now. I'm not as old as some of you, I should say. <laughs> But my mother was dying with tuberculosis. She was hemorrhaging blood from the mouth. And my daddy took her to the doctor. And when she entered into the hospital, they told her that it was TB in the last stages. And so the doctor reluctantly let my mother go home and prepare her things to come back to the asylum. But all of the children had to be put somewhere else. And so, uh, my mother got down on her knees and began to pray. And as she began to pray, she said, Lord, you gave me that husband and you gave me those kids. She said, I believe that I'm supposed to be the wife to my husband. And the mother of my children. She said, I don't believe that's supposed to be another woman's job. 
And she began to plead with God to heal her. And a cool wind came in the room. And then they told her. They said, William Branham is praying for the sick. In, in Campbellsville, Kentucky. And it's on the tape. Jesus Christ is saying yesterday, today, and forever. My mother walks up on the platform. And she stands beside the prophet. And when she approaches the angel of the Lord, who was always on the prophet's right side, she went numb from her waist down. Brother Brandon began to discern her. He said, Woman, you've got night sweats. And he told her the doctor said there was no cure for her. He said, but TB is nothing for Jesus to heal. He said, that was the first disease that Jesus healed in his ministry. And so he began to pray upon the authority of the Bible. And when he said, Amen, Amen, he turned and quoted the Nazarite blessing. May God cause his face to shine upon you. And when he finished, she started to walk off the platform. And he said, Wait. He said, As a sign of your healing. He said, weigh yourself when you get home. Ha! Glory! And in two weeks, weigh yourself again. Because she weighed around 90 pounds. She said, as she started to walk off this side, she said she remembers when Brother Branham said, Amen. She felt a churning start in her body. And the prophet told her later. He said when disease germs leave a body. He said there's always a churning. And a voice spoke to my mama. And said was there not ten lepers cleansed? But only one stopped to thank me. And so she found the first chair. And she began to thank the Lord for healing. She walked outside and she went to a well house and they had a bucket of water with one cup that everybody had to use and she dipped that cup in that water and she held it up and she said, I drink this cup of water in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and nobody will get tuberculosis. For years, they called her the woman at the well. She went home. After two weeks, a voice spoke to my mama and said, 14. That's 14. Because she had forgot what Brother Branham had said. And a few minutes later, it spoke two weeks. Two weeks. And she walked to my daddy. And she says, honey, she said, I don't know what this means. She said, a voice told me 14 and two weeks. My daddy said, that's simple. He said, uh, you'll be healed two weeks tomorrow. And Brother Branham said, in two weeks, go to the doctor. She went to the doctor. The doctor said, it's impossible for any change to come this quick. But they x-rayed her. And the doctor came out scratching his head. He said, it's cleared out. Let me tell you, our God is Jehovah Rapha. 
Mwari wedu di Jehova Rafa. Hallelujah. My uncle Pat. Uh, uh, uncle Pat. We call him Pat. His name is Presley. Why not the Presley? I still go out to Pat. Uh, he was on the platform with the prophet. And Brother Bram told him, take that brace off that boy's leg. And, and, the, and, and the boy's leg was all shriveled up and small from polio. And my uncle jumped down there and started taking off the braces. And they had what they call little wing nuts. wing nuts. And as they began to unscrew them, my uncle said, he said every time they would get a little bit loose, he said the leg would grow and get tight again. He said they would get it a little more loose and the leg would grow and get tight again. He said it took us forever to get them braces off. But when the braces was took off, his leg was completely normal. Glory! My first cousin, Ray Tooley, was in a car wreck and his leg was cut so bad and gangre gangrene had set up in it and the doctor said we're going to have to amputate it so they made a phone so they made a phone call to Shreveport, Louisiana and Brother Branham was down in Shreveport preaching. This was in 1965. And Brother Junior Jackson received the phone call from the family. They said, can you tell Brother Branham to pray for Ray Tooley? It's an emergency. Emergency. And if he don't get healing, he's going to have his leg amputated. And so Brother Junior told Brother Branham. Brother Junior told Brother Branham. And it was at the end of a service. And Brother Branham hollered out after the people, most of them had left. He said, is there any preachers in the house? And there was 15 preachers left. And he said, come up here where I'm at. Come on, brothers. Step up here with me if you would. And Brother Bram took his handkerchief like this. And he put it out. He said, now lay a hand on top of it. Each one of you lay a hand on top of it. You can come on around here. Just lay a hand on top of it. And then Brother Bram laid his hand on top. And he began to pray. And after he prayed, he said, thus say of the Lord. He said, when this handkerchief is laid on the leg of Ray Tooley, he will be immediately healed. <laughs> Brother Junior Jackson walked into my cousin's room. His leg was laid out there in terrible pain. He walked in and he held up the handkerchief. He said, Brother Ray, I don't know what's going to happen. But Brother Ram said, when I lay this on your leg, that you're going to be healed. And so he walked up. And he laid it on his leg. And my cousin said something warm started from the top of his head and came down through his body. And when it went through his leg, his leg was completely healed instantly. Hallelujah. 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 Glory. Amen. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. Thank you for healing us, Sister Lord. Hallelujah. In Jesus name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. For oh, our God is Jehovah Rapha. The Lord God, our healer. He is omnipotent. 
He inhabited the praises of his people. Oh, just worship the Lord a minute. Lord, just do what you want to do right now. Lord, the Lord is in this place. While you're moving from tent to tent. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Lord, let the people be healed. Let the power of God give them the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Lord, anchor their souls in a rock of ages. Thank you, Jesus. Let them never be the same again. Hallelujah. Make Christ real to each other. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Just keep the handkerchief, sis. Amen. I'll give you another handkerchief. Thank you, brother. Amen. May God bless you, sister. Hallelujah. 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 To God be the glory. Glory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. The bride is the only one that have a right to the feast of the Lord. We have a right to the resurrection. We have a right to the Holy Ghost. We have a right to a new body. We have a right to the marriage supper. We have a right to be happy. I said we have a right to be excited. The anointing of God breaks the yoke. Let me tell you, no weapon, I said, no weapon formed against us shall prosper. And every tongue, every tongue that shall rise up in judgment against us, thou shalt condemn. This is the word of the Lord. Unto the people of the feast. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, worship God. I want to be daimari. Praise be unto God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hey, oh, praise our God. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen, Brother Bram said in future home. Brother Branham, married to future home. You may be seated just a moment more. He said, after the seventh church age is over. And it is. He said, and it is. He said, Luther's age is over. Methodist age is over. Pentecostal age is over. Now you go into what? Eternity. No more sevens. No more threes. They're in eternity. Now let me drop down here. He says, so old man and old woman. And I'm getting close to that. <laughs> Don't be discouraged. If you are a representation up here in the attribute of God, if you crossed from the seventh day into the eighth, you have got into the eternal by the baptism of the Holy Ghost. He said, this is the eternal. This is the eternal. The feast after the feast of tabernacles. He showed us that we had, let me finish reading the quote. He said the feast of tabernacles was the last feast. The seventh feast. And we are worshiping now under the feast of tabernacles. The seventh church age. And he said in the millennium we'll be under the feast of tabernacles again. In the seventh day. And then after the seventh day, 
we have a holy convocation and we go back into the eternal by the eternal one that came and redeemed us and took us back and letting us recognize that we're a part of this so let me say it like this hallelujah when the seals was opened up Amen. That Pentecostal age, it, 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 that, that Pentecostal feast ceased. And so the bride entered into a feast of tabernacles under the seventh age. But the prophet said that the feast for the bride does not stop. Because it has an eighth day. It takes us over to eternity. Amen. We're under the Feast of Tabernacles now. But to the bride, it becomes an eternal feast. And it'll carry us to the Feast of Tabernacles in the millennium. And then at the future home, we'll be under the eternal Feast of Tabernacles again. That's Isaiah 4, 5, and 6. No, Isaiah 4, 5, and 6. That's Revelation 21, 1 through 6. No, Revelation 21, 1 to 6. That's that pillar of cloud. No, we'll, be a, we'll be a tabernacle of shade over that city. It will be a cloud by day. And it will be a fire by night. It will be set for our defense. Brother, let me tell you right now. The bride is under the pillar of fire. We're in a third exodus. And we're going to follow that pillar of fire. All the way into the millennium. All the way into our future home. We are privileged people. To know that we're now under an eternal siege. The feast of Passover is an eternal feast. Are you hearing me? The prophet said Jesus will have nail scars. As a memorial of Calvary. In the millennium. Healing. Is Jehovah, uh, 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 Jehovah Rapha. Jehovah Rapha. It's going to be an eternal feast. Because even in that new city, when the gates are open, for the great memorial of the feast of the Lord, nations will come through those gates and they'll pluck an olive leaf for the healing of the nations. It's an eternal affair between you and God. That's why, we can, that's why we've got to receive eternal bodies. Because down on the inside of you is an eternal son of God. Is an eternal daughter of God. And we have got to have a, a, a we have got to have a tabernacle. That that eternal man can live in. Again. Oh, the eternal feast of God. We're not getting a body that'll live a thousand years. But we're getting a body that's eternal. We'll live throughout eternity in that tabernacle. Well, I'm excited. I'm excited about the message. I'm excited about our prophet. I'm excited about the bride. I'm excited about Brother Godwin. I'm excited about this brother right here. And this man of God right here. And this man of God right here. Shake somebody's hand and say, I'm excited about you. Because I see that God is in his tabernacle. God is in his tabernacle. We are under the feast of tabernacles. God has a 
has incarnated himself in the bride of Jesus Christ because we have accepted the vindicated message of the hour into our hearts. Hallelujah! I'm not going to finish my notes. But I'm going to say this. It's not a strange thing for God to use the first person of an individual. Brother Bram said the first person was the body and the spirit. And God at times under the Old Testament prophets and anointed servants of God they would speak as if they were God himself when Moses walked up before Pharaoh he didn't say let God's people go he said let my people go when Elijah walked up before Ahab, he said, there, he didn't say there won't be rain until God calls for it. He said there won't be rain or dew until I call for it. David in Psalm chapter 22, he spoke as if he was God. He said, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? They pierced my hands. They pierced my feet. That wasn't David. That was Christ in David. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Brother Ned Iverson was a great friend of mine. Uh, brother Ned Iverson. Brother Ned Iverson. And he actually preached a few times with the prophet years yeah. ago. And Brother Branham had made a statement. I'll ride this trail once more. And he said, it confused me. And he said, I went to see Brother Branham in Shreveport in 65. And said he would always come down and eat a sandwich about 3 o'clock in the afternoon. He said, I met him at the table. And, and another brother was a witness there. And he said he sat down. Brother Branham ordered his sandwich. And brother, uh, brother Ned said it was in my heart. That question was in my heart. He said, and Brother Branham started to take a bite out of his sandwich. And he sat it down. And he just looked at me. And he said, I knew something else was looking at me. He said, when he looked at me, I knew something was looking through my eyes. And he said, yes, Brother Ned, I'll ride this trail once more. He said, but I won't be coming back for all of them. He said, I'll be coming back to all those little faithful ones that stay true to this message. Brother, that's the God of Elijah. That's the word of God. That's the Holy Ghost. That's Christ coming back and taking his people home. Hallelujah. When I read the tent vision, what I see is the Feast of Tabernacles. There is no scripture in the Bible where that vision will fit anywhere else. It belongs to the message of this hour. Church, we're a blessed people. I'm not looking for Brother Branham to come back and reveal the mysteries. I believe the mysteries have been revealed. But I'm looking for the God of Elijah. I'm looking for the God of William Branham. And in the resurrection, I'm looking for Brother Branham. And I'm looking for my daddy. 
And I'm looking for my grandma. And I'm looking for Brother Roberson. And I'm looking for all the saints of God that's going to gather around us under a great feast of tabernacles. Everybody is holding the glory of God. Oh, raise your hands up and say, Praise the Lord. Praise our God. Oh, we love you. Oh, no, no. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's have a feast. Let's worship our God. Let's rejoice. Under the feast of tabernacle. What's the time of the latter rain? Under the Feast of Tabernacles was a time of the latter rain. Under the Feast of Tabernacles was the ascent of the Holy Hill. Under the Feast of Tabernacles, David wrote Psalms 27. He said, The Lord is my light. In my salvation, whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked, even my enemies, came upon me, they stumbled and fell. Though an host should encamp itself against me, in this will I be confident. For in the time of trouble, in the time of trouble he shall hide me in his tent or his pavilion or his hut I said in the time of trouble he shall hide me in his pavilion in the secret of his tabernacle and he shall set me set me upon a rock our head shall be lifted up above our enemies when my mother and father forsake me the Lord will lift me up glory to God Hallelujah! Oh, brother and sister, Amen. let's have a feast. Amen. Let's worship Amen. our God. Amen. Praise Amen. your Lord. Amen. Praise Amen. your Amen. Hallelujah! Praise the Lord! Oh, thank you, Jesus. I thank you. Thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you. What can we say? Teacher to Gudi. It was truly good for us to be here. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Any need that you have. As long as you need it from the Lord Jesus, you don't even have to have a great faith. He says, if you have a little faith, the reason that you came is enough evidence that you have that little faith. That little faith you have. Don't listen to the devil's argument. In this present now. Anything is possible. If thou canst believe. If thou canst believe. Wherever you are. I'm going to call the men of God back here to just pray for you now. If your problem is right there with you, lay your hand on that problem. If the problem is somewhere else, but you don't know which direction it is, just point somewhere and say, refer to that problem and it will be solved here. This is our decree. Canada Mutigorako, Rina Quarini Pasiri Pauri, Ingo Nongas, the Chet of the Panda Nongas, the Ipa, the Nongas and Abutigorango, and after the prayer, I want you to write in your notebook that problem. What does Abuna Matirwa? 
And see the salvation of our God. We want to come back here next year, same time, same place. So now we talk about the border. No, yeah. Go and watch it. Zimbo, you watch it. And you will have your testimony. Chabubu, chabubu, ne mwa kachiba chama kambwe yo. If you think you'll be better off and nearer by coming over here, you are free to do so. Kana ochifunga wote singa kubatire kutenda kwa boku uya kuno kuberi wakasununguka. If you think by kneeling down it helps, but if you are standing there, that's perfectly alright. Jesus is here. Jesus is here. Lord Jesus Christ, King of kings and Lord of lords, mighty God and everlasting Father, we come to you today, Lord, humbly, knowing, Lord, that you're in the midst of your people. Jehovah Shammah, the Lord is present. The Lord is with us right now under these tents, under this sun. Oh God, the God of our salvation is moving among us right now. Lord, I ask for the angel of the Lord. Oh God, to move upon these people today. Lord, move from heart to heart, from tabernacle to tabernacle. May the glory of the Lord be seen. May the sick be healed. May the sugar diabetes be delivered. May the heart trouble be delivered. May arthritis be delivered. May cancer be delivered. May every manner and every diver of sickness be cast out. Satan, we send you and your demons back to hell in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. May the people be released. May the people be free by the power of God. Satan, you're a defeated foe today. You have lost the battle. Our Lord Jesus has conquered. Our God is a God of salvation. My soul makes his boast in the Lord. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, and all that's within me. Bless his holy name. He's the Lord my God that healeth all of our diseases and forgives all of our iniquities. Father, bring a fresh anointing upon every preacher. Lord, send gifts of healing, send gifts of wisdom, gifts of knowledge. Oh God, send gifts of miracles. Let these men of God be greatly used. Let there be a greater testimony and a greater light raised up in honor of this message than what's ever been raised up before. Let the people rejoice. Oh God, we give the people to you. Give them the Holy Spirit. Fill them with the Holy Ghost. Lord, let them stay true to this message. Let them stay true to the Word of God in this end time. Lord, it's the truth, nothing but the truth. So help me, God. We stand like Hattie Wright. Brother Branham, that ain't nothing but the truth. Brother Godwin, that ain't nothing but the truth. Church of the living God, that ain't nothing but the truth. This is bride food. Spiritual food in due season. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, mighty God. Oh, send your power. Send down the rain, Lord. Send down the rain. Let every heart, Lord, if any man thirst, let him come unto me. Oh, we're bringing the people to you today, Lord. If any man thirst, the last day, the great day of the Feast of Tabernacles. If any man thirst, Lord, pour out the rain. Let this rapturing faith take a hold in every soul. Let the spirit of the living God wash us out. 
Oh God. Oh God. Oh Lord. Just bring the anointing of your love. Oh, envelop this place with a canopy tabernacle of your love. Lord, let the pillar of fire be seen for these people today. Let the cloud of glory, Lord, let it move among the people. Let it move from heart to heart. God, we've already seen the picture of that whirlwind. Lord, the brother showed me a whirlwind that was in front of this church. Lord God, we believe the whirlwind is here today. Lord, it's stirring up. I hear a rustle in the mulberry tree. I know, I know, I know a move is on. We hear sounds from heaven. This is that that was spoken by Malachi the prophet. This is that that was written by John the Revelator. This is that that was spoken by William Branham, our prophet. Let a sweep come over the people, Lord. Take us all the way. Take us all the way. Oh, we love you, Jesus. Oh, we love you, Jesus. Oh, mighty God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Oh, praise the Lord. Let's just worship him. Let's just open our hearts up and receive from him. Say, Lord, I receive. Lord, I invite you. I accept my healing. Hallelujah. I am what God says I am. I can do what God says I can do. We believe. Father, we love you. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you. Jesus. Only believe all things are possible. It's dedicated to the message of the hour. Hallelujah. Only believe all things are possible. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, my Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, oh, my Jesus. Oh, just Thank receive you. your portion. Don't be afraid to take God at his word. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise be to God. Hallelujah. Oh, Lady. Oh, Ridica. Yes, oh, Lady. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Lady. Let's give us the right key. Oh, live Oh, things are possible. Oh, things are possible. 
to believe. Oh, Let me 